Revelation 7, after this I beheld in lo a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds. That's where we get the word kinfolk from. And people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. You're right, brother. It doesn't matter the color of the skin. It matters the color of the robe. Amen. I appreciate that. I do. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sister. Are we still passing out numbers, Sarah? Yes. All right. Somebody else. While I fix this. Go ahead. That's an Arkansas accent, by the way, you hear. <laughs> South Arkansas. Amen. I love this guy. I love being around him and uh, appreciate he's been here, what was it, five years ago, you said? And um, we enjoyed his company back then and enjoy it now. And, and uh be sad to see him go. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Can you do a talk for one weekend? <laughs> do what now? Can you testify twice in one weekend? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Why? The Lord saved me and I'm blessed and passed the mark. We're following him and we're being to do. I'm not going to do it for the Spirit. So, now there's a praise. Yeah. Bless the pastor's wife and family yes. and mother. Yes. Bless. Ask God to bless them. Okay. They're the ones that have uh, helped keep me where I needed to be. I promise you that. Somebody else. Run out of time. Go ahead, Alicia. I just want to say I'm very, very thankful to be here today. Um, I've learned to cherish the good days, and I love this church. I love all of you people. You guys are my life. This is my life. And I'm so thankful that you allowed me to be able to get out of the country today. I was glad to make that I'm going to be able to stop. Hey. Hey. Thank you very much for that, Sister Sarah. And get you one too. All right, how many's left? In here? Did everybody get one? You know what? Who's downstairs? Well. Tell you what, just take this down there, take this down, take the bag down, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick a number. And if it's somebody up here, okay, we'll 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 let them know. But if it ends up being somebody down there, come come tell us. So somebody will have to run and tell her. Who 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 do I get to pick the number out of the bag now? Come here, Alicia. Jackie Onassis, come up here. <laughs> I'm going to shake it up real good. Drum roll, please. No, I, I trust you. 
I got you. All right. Somebody text somebody downstairs and tell them they all lost. They all lost, every one of them. All right. Uh, let's preach, shall we? Genesis chapter 1. Uh, I thought maybe God would give me a different message uh, just for this homecoming, and uh, he didn't. And so I uh, started putting this together, and, um, you know, God, God kind of made it easy uh, to put together kind of what verses to go where and what order to put them in and so on. And uh, I thought, uh, when I got done, I thought, well, this will be a good, happy, good, happy message that people would just uh, rejoice and praise God in and so on. Uh, and then this morning came around. And uh, Lisa got up and I was just kind of laying there and um, God dealt with me. And uh, part of it may not be so, so nice and so easy. I just want to tell you that right now. Um, and you'll see, hopefully, where I'm going with this. Uh, and understand that if, if you get something out of this message, you tell God thank you. Um, and I will tell God thank you already. Because he's already dealt with me about it. And uh, will continue to deal with me. And I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that God will still do that. The fact that God doesn't leave you alone. On issues of life. Means that he still cares. And he, he wants to fix. Something that's broken in your life. But if God just leaves you alone, number one, you'll never know it. You will never know it. Because if God leaves you alone, he leaves you alone. And you never have the thought of, why doesn't God deal with me anymore? Why doesn't God get on to me anymore? Why doesn't God try to chasten me or change me? You, won't, you will never think those thoughts. Because God's left. He has written Ichabod. Do we know what that means? The glory has departed. Which is what the name of the son of... Um, it, huh? It was Phineas. Yeah, Phineas' son. Thank you for that. It was Phineas' son. Phineas was killed in battle. And he was the son of Eli, the priest. And both Hophni and Phinehas were his sons. They both died in the battle. The Ark of the Covenant was taken by the Philistines. When Eli heard about the death of his sons, the Bible doesn't really record what happened. But when he heard that the Ark of the Covenant had been taken by the Philistines, the Bible says that basically he had a stroke. Or a heart attack. He fell backwards. The Bible says he was a heavy man. He fell backwards. He fell backwards and landed. And I guess it broke his neck. But it killed him instantly. And when Phineas' wife, who was pregnant, when she travailed in birth, and they told her Phineas is dead, and the Ark of the Covenant had been taken. When she gave birth to her son, she named him Ichabod. Which literally means the glory has departed. God's presence has left you. And I promise you, that is a place you never, ever want to be. Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. I like this 
this day in creation because I like, I like astronomy. I like stars and the moon and, and uh, the sun and the, the motions of all of those. I, I, I love that. Um, I'm not an astrologer. That is someone who does what the stars tells them to do. I don't do what the stars tell me to do. I, would, I do what the one who made the stars tells me to do. Genesis 1 verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. Now, remember, now God has already said on day one of creation, let there be light. And there was light. Now, so this is odd. Because for three days now, day and night have taken place. But there is no source for the light to show up on the morning. Where does the light come from that showed up on day two, day three of creation? Where did the light go when it was time for the end of the day on day three? Where did the light go? We don't know. Because at this time, God has not created the sun. He's not created the moon. He's not created the stars. It's a mystery and I'll be sure to ask God when I get to heaven. Amen. Or maybe I'll just know it because I'm in heaven. Amen. So anyway, just thought I'd throw that in there. So now God is creating the lights of the firmament. All of the stars. And I want you to think about this just for a minute. And, and get a, a sense of awe and wonder at God who put... How many stars are there? We can't know the number. There's just in the night sky, we can't count them all. Just in our galaxy, we can't count them all. In the galaxies that lie beyond our galaxy, we cannot count them all. We sent Hubble into space. To see galaxies that we had never seen before. Now we see galaxies and we can't tell how many stars are in those either. There's too many. Then we put the Webb telescope up there. It's seeing way more than the Hubble telescope ever even thought about seeing. We can't even, we can't even see the farthest galaxy out. We know there's one out there. We can barely see just a little bit of light. So we know it's a galaxy. But there's no way we can even count how many stars are in that one. And this, this is all around us. God created that many of them. Isn't that something? And see, he didn't have to. He could have just limited man's ability to see far into space. And man would have thought, well, there's like three or four thousand of them up there. But he didn't. He kept making and kept making and kept making and kept making and kept making. And all those stars are out there. And every time we send a space telescope up, we see more than we ever thought we would see before. And man is still in awe. And I just wish that those people who peep through those telescopes, I just wish they knew the God that I know and the Bible that I read. And believe what they read. Then they would understand that if they peek through that telescope for a thousand days, they wouldn't find them all. Amen. So God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. and Let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And don't you think about what he's saying. Think about the number here. I've made a point about the number of this. Signs, seasons, days and years. And it's day four. So what does that tell you? There's something about the gospel here. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. There's something about it and something that about it that pertains to you personally. Okay. So verse 15, let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to do something. And that is to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day. The lesser light to rule the night. 
He made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night. You know what? You folks, I need you to start praying right now because this is not the notes that I put together last night. And those notes are kind of important. Where are those notes? Some, I mean, I'm seriously, somebody start praying. Because I'm, I'm telling you, the devil is out after this message. Um, God help me. Yes, please. Yes, please. They're not here. This is bad. I'm not kidding you. Let me do let me do this. I'm going to I'm going to just put this I'm going to put this up on the screen so you can follow along with me in your Bible, okay? So give me just about 30 seconds to set the screens up so that we can do that. And then you pray that I, I can remember what it was that God wanted me to remember. Y'all see that, don't you? You see those Bible verses? Okay. So I'm going to go back to Genesis chapter 1, and we're going to pray. Okay? I don't know what's happened. To my notes but I had them in really good shape last night father I need your help this morning I don't think I've ever needed your help like I need your help today and uh, Lord you laid this message on my heart I know you did I know you did and so father I, I know God that everything happens for a reason and um, Lord, just be glorified today in my best effort or my worst effort. Be glorified. Be magnified. May your name be praised. And um, may your word be exalted and speak to someone in their heart today. I pray this in the name of Jesus. And all of God's people say with me, Amen. Amen. Now, start in verse 16. Oh, keep your Bible open so you can read it. If you can't see the screen, you got a Bible there in front of you. I suggest you use it. And God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day. And the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven. And I want you to look at this phrase. To give light upon the earth. That's the job that all the stars have, that the moon has, and that the sun has. It is to give light upon the earth. Now, I want you to take your Bible, and I want you to go to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. The Gospel of John chapter 1. I like that sound, the sound of pages turning. I wanted to name our first daughter, Paige Turner Hoggard. No, I didn't really, I made that up. John chapter 1, in the beginning, see this goes with the creation, doesn't it? In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was 
God. See, we believe that, don't we? We believe that this word here, this book, is the representation of everything that is Jesus Christ. Everything that goes with His name, everything that goes with His character, everything that, that goes with uh, His work. He even said in, in, in the book of Hebrews, He said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do Thy will, O God. So if you want to know what Jesus was really here for, you read the book. And you'll find it. And that's where we're going to find the answers this morning. So here we have the Word of God, which is Jesus Christ. And here we have on day four of creation, God creating the Son. Now, there's a, there's a verse. I, I don't want you to turn there yet. We're going to get there shortly. But I'm just going to have to type it in so I can remember what it is. And the phrase is, light of the... Finish it for me. Light of the world. Okay, so let's keep reading in John, verse uh, 2. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. He made me, and He made you. Now, does God make mistakes? Let me ask you again. Does God make mistakes? Very good. So when God made you, the way you are. Answer this now. Does God make mistakes? No, He doesn't. Everything that you are, both good and bad, God made you. Now, when people say, well, I live this lifestyle because God made me this way. There's only one thing wrong about that. It is, I live this way because God made me this way. The truth of it is, God didn't make them that way, but He made them that way so that they would look for a better way to live. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? A better way to live. Because the way that we lived before we found the better way, we didn't like it. But everything was made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. Now, verse 4, in Him was life. And the life, watch this, was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Now, there's two types of people listening to this message today. There are those who will understand it, and those that won't. And it all has to do with your love for the light. If you want the light of God's love, shining in your heart, understanding that the way God made you, He made you that way for a reason, so that you could come to Him and He would say, I can change you if you'll let me. Now, if you don't comprehend His light, you will never ask for God to change you, will you? You'll never ask for God to change you. You'll never ask for God to make things better for you. You'll never want it. Because you're in darkness. And that darkness is so dark. It cannot comprehend the light that God wants to shine in you. Or Now let me throw this in here too. The light that God wants to shine through you. Are you catching that one? The light that God wants to shine through you is the light of... Remember, we counted to four on these things for signs, for seasons, for days, for years. So that means there's something about this creating the sun, the moon, and the stars on the fourth day, having it for a fourth day. By the way, there's four seasons, right? 
four times in the day, isn't there? Morning, up till noon, afternoon, first part of the evening, last part of the morning. Four times, all 12 divided by, or actually 24 divided by four, eight hours apiece. Four parts of the day. i got to move on. I'm rambling. But anyway, the number four is here for a reason. It means that what God wants to do is shine to you, but God also wants to shine through you. And let me, let me boil this down for you. We saw this phrase, light of the world. We're reading here John, and it says, all things were made by him, verse 3, without him was not anything made that was made. Verse 4 says, in him was life, and the life was the light of what? And did you know I did not have this in my notes this morning? So there's something here that is for someone here. Now I'm going to be the first to admit that it's me. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. I can tell you that I believe with all my heart that God shined the light to me. And in 1975, at a dusty old Bible youth camp, I went down to the altar and I asked Jesus to save me. And he did. Then, God wanted to shine his light through me. Now, shining it to me, for me, has always been the easy part. Because like I said yesterday, I've always believed in God. I don't know how I did. But even as a very, very young child, I just always believed in God. But then, as a young boy, growing up in church, growing up in this church, I can look back now and I can see how God was preparing me for being what I am right here, doing what I'm doing right now. That wasn't the easy part. I can tell you that right now. God shining the light to me was easy. But letting God shine the light of life through me has always been a troublesome area for me. And I'm just being dead, blunt, honest. I'm telling you, God did not give you a pastor that was better than you. Not any one of you. And so there's been times in all the years that I've stood behind a pulpit since 1982, I think, is when I surrendered to preach. That God shining the light through me wasn't, wasn't easy. I struggled. And as my life began to mature and my life began to expand, and what I mean by that is I found a wife here and we started a family and that family grew here and then those families, those kids started their own families here and so we've worked together for years now and my wife and my children, they know things about their dad. And they know that if I say to you, sometimes the light is hard to shine through me to them. 
If I say that, they would say amen. Wouldn't you? Say amen. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. See, because... Let me show you something. Turn to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Turn your Bibles there. Y'all are going to see something. You know what I believe? I believe when I get done preaching this message, I'll go in my office and I'll find the other one just like that. John chapter 8, verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Now think about what that means. Jesus created the Son, but He is the Son. Now, He didn't create Himself. But remember that question I asked you earlier about for the first three days, where did the light come from? That was the light on the world for the first three days. It was Christ. Amen. Where did he go? I don't know where he went. He's Christ. He's God. Amen. He, I don't know what, I don't know if he turned around. I don't know if he, I don't know if he covered himself with a blanket. I don't know what he did. I just know for three days, he was the light to this world. And from day four on, I can tell you that he's still the light to this world. In Mal it was Malachi chapter 4, he's the son, capital S-U-N, of what? Now what kind of light does God want to shine to this earth? The light of righteousness. So when people say, God made me this way, they're right. But God don't want them to stay that way because He's the Son of Righteousness. God wants people to live right. To do right things. To think right ways. To walk a right walk. To be the right example to others. Somebody say amen. So Jesus being the light of the world means that he's got a, a big thing hanging on his shoulders. It means that he's got to be perfect. He can't make a mistake. He can't lie to people. Can't fool them. He's got to be he's got to be perfect in this world to be the light of the world that he is. Doesn't he? And so he said, I'm the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the, what is that? Light of life? Well, hold my potato sack. Go back and look at what he said in John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. So we go back to John chapter 8. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of... That's what we just read in John chapter 1, wasn't it? I'm kind of liking this message more than the one I worked on. When God shines a light to you, it's a perfect light. And that light wants to show you there's a right way to live. A right way to live. God also wants to shine. Let me, let me get... Let me keep going here on this theme here. J turn to John chapter 9. He says it again. Starting in verse 4. 
He said, I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day. Because he's the light of the world, right? While it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So now twice now, Jesus has made this claim of himself. The claim is backed up in scripture. Malachi chapter 4, he's the son of righteousness. Psalm chapter 19 says that the heavens declare the uh, glory of God. The firmament showeth his handiwork day unto day, utter a speech night unto night. Uh, um, oh, I always trip up on that last part there. But the bottom line is that the entire universe, the Bible says, is a tabernacle for the sun, which comes out as a bride ready to meet his bridegroom. Or the, I said that wrong. The bridegroom ready to meet his bride. Somebody say amen. That, that sounds better, doesn't it? Now, so we know that Christ, backed up in Scripture, we know that Christ is I mean, he's the image of the sun. In Revelation chapter 1, when John was praying on the Lord's day and he heard a voice behind him, he turned around, he looked, and he saw someone that was standing there. And the Bible says his countenance was as the sun. So we know that Christ is. And Christ shines a perfect light to each and every one of us, doesn't he? Perfect light. He has got to be perfect in everything he does. And the good news is, he is. When he made you, he didn't make a mistake. When he made me, he didn't make one either. Now, I have made mistakes. Several of them. I don't like to talk about it. But I'm just like everybody else here. Mom, don't say amen while I'm preaching stuff like this. Don't do that. You want me to start telling stories? My parents were good parents, but they weren't perfect. My grandparents, I always just believed I had the best grandparents in the world, but I found out they weren't perfect either. And so, here's what I'm getting at. There's only three places in the Bible where the, the phrase light of the world is used. Turn to Matthew 5. Verse 14. Read that to yourself. Read it out loud. I don't care if you want to. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house let your light so shine before men that they may see your what good works and glorify your father which is in heaven so remember what i just said that christ is the son of righteousness and he shines into this world a perfect light he shines it to you and he shines it to you, and he shines it to you, and to you, and to you, and to me. And that light is perfect. You cannot blame anything on God. Because he shines perfectly to every man, woman, and child in this world. He's the son of righteousness. Now... We also, it says, are the light of the world. That blows me away. He's talking to his disciples. 
And he's saying, you are the light of the world too. So, the light shined to me and I saw the light, I comprehended the light, I yielded myself to the light and I said, I want to live that light. I want that light to shine to me and I want that light to shine through me. I want people to look at me and say to themselves, I want to be saved. I want to live for God. I want to do what's right. So I got married to the best wife God could give me right out of this church. I found out that I'm supposed to shine the light to her. I'm supposed to shine the son of righteousness who makes no mistakes to my wife so that my wife could see the light of God in me and through me. But I'm here to tell you, I haven't always done that. That's why, that's why when I was thinking about this message this morning, that's what hit me. I wanted to shine the light to my family, my children. I wanted them to see Christ shining his light to me. I wanted my children to see their dad reading the Bible. But then I found out I was supposed to also shine the light through me to them. I haven't always done that one either. And then I was supposed to shine the light through me to all the people that God has allowed us to reach out to. First, the people that are in the pews here every Sunday, every Sunday night, Wednesday night, whatever it is that we have going on. I'm supposed to let the light shine through me to them. But I haven't always done that. I've failed. At times in my life, I've failed doing that. Now, I'm saying this because God told me to say it. But if the truth were to be told, I'm not alone in this room, am I? Don't you dare say that I am. Because I know some of y'all. I know some things that you've said to me. I know some things that you've done. I just, you're not perfect either. Now, I'm not saying that that's okay. Because remember, the light that shined to us is perfect. And remember what Jesus said about being perfect? Remember what he said? Be Ye perfect as I. You want me to look that up? You want me to find it for you? In case you doubt, disagree. Maybe, I, maybe, maybe I'm supposed to do it this way anyway. Be your perfect. That's Arkansas talk. Be perfect. I didn't find it, did I? I will. Anyway, it's in there, isn't it? Huh? 
as oh, okay b oh b two e's b perfect there we go there we go Jesus saith unto them, if thou wilt be perfect. So, the bottom line is, the light that shines to you is the light of Jesus Christ shining His Word into your life. And if God's Word, listen, if God's Word says, thou shalt not commit adultery, you shouldn't commit adultery. Can I get an amen out of some people? If God's word says, thou shalt not steal, then you know what you shouldn't do? You shouldn't steal. If God's word says, thou shalt not bear false witness, you shouldn't lie. If God's word says to live a certain way, you're supposed to live that way. And I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you this morning that you cannot change yourself. I've tried it. Yes, I've tried it. I've tried changing you several times. It's never worked, has it, Olivia? It's never worked. No, I've tried to change myself several times. It never works. I fail at it every time. Which means that I have to bow and humble myself first before my God. And then I have to bow and humble myself before the people that I was supposed to shine the light to. And tell them I'm not perfect. And I'm not perfect. And so this morning. We're going to open up these altars. If you want. To let God's light shine to you. Come. And we'll pray. If you want God to shine his light through you so that you could be the example of Christ to your family, to your friends, your loved ones, your neighbors, your kinfolk, the people you see at the gas station, doesn't matter, or your your own church members, your own church members then why don't you come down to one of these benches?